Hey YouTube, this is Richie B from wafflefree.com back with another video. And today we're going to take a look at building a VMware ESXi 6.7 server. So before we start, there's a couple of things we're going to need. Um, one is uh, an empty server, uh, preferably a physical one if you have one. Um, the second thing we need is the VMware software itself. And lastly, um, we need a tool to make a uh, USB stick bootable. So I guess you're going to need a USB stick as well. Um, so we're going to quickly just go through those three items and get you ready for the ESX install. So firstly, if we go to VMware.com up here and then go over to login and then select my VMware. It should take you to another screen like this. So if you haven't got a VMware account already, just click here to sign up for a new account and then sign in. Once you've signed into VMware.com, um, you're going to be looking for ASXi 6.7. I think the current version uh, is U2. Um, so if you download that in the ISO file format, um, the other piece of software that you're going to need, uh, or at least I recommend using, is if you go to Google and search for something called Rufus, R-U-F-U-S, and that, you'll see uh, Rufus.ie is the main website. So again, uh, this tool is essentially to make a, a VMware bootable USB stick using the ISO file that you would have downloaded from VMware uh, and then obviously this is an easy way to create that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video here um, if you want to go away download the Rufus software and the VMware ISO file and then we'll pick up in a little while uh, and we'll start installing VMware so hopefully uh, by now you should have an ISO file um, it may be renamed differently to mine because obviously I've just renamed that to a sensible name that I understand. But you should have a similar sort of ISO file. And you should also have the Rufus uh, application, which should look fairly similar to this. Okay, if you haven't opened Rufus already, just go ahead and uh, run it. Now you'll notice on my system, the uh, F drive is my USB stick. So all we want to do first is just ensure that in the device that the uh, USB stick is selected. Now the next thing is in the boot selection we want a disk or ISO based image. Um, so that's uh, the other options are there but that's the one we want. And we hit select. And well, what we're going to do here is we're going to browse um, to the location where we've got uh, ISO file for VMware. So we literally just browse to that location and select the ISO file. Okay, now the volume label down here should be automatically generated uh, and all you pretty much need to do is hit the start button. It'll give you the usual warning about yeah it's going to destroy everything on the memory stick. Yeah, we expect that. So we'll just click OK. And you can see down here it's preparing the memory stick. So what I'm going to do is uh, this should only take about 30 or 40 seconds. So I'm just going to pause the uh, video until that's finished. Okay, as you can see here, the USB memory stick has uh, finished creating and the status is ready. Uh, that means the, uh, the USB stick is ready to be booted from. So the next thing we need to do is go to your server, plug the USB stick in. Um, just double check your BIOS settings on your server to ensure you can boot from the USB stick. Um, sometimes that needs a change in the BIOS. Um, but most of the time you can normally uh, spam one of the keys like escape or F9 or F2, which allow you to uh, select the boot menu. So uh, we're going to go ahead and take the take a look at the boot process. Okay, right, we're uh, ready to install. 
Um, I've kind of skipped ahead a little bit and just booted um, to the first screen. So obviously there's no point you seeing my bias of boot up screens, waste of time. So uh, hopefully uh, if you've booted up, you should now be at the same screen. Um, first thing to note is that when you're booting up, if you don't move the uh, the arrow keys or the cursor using the arrow keys, you'll only have six seconds to make a selection. So first thing you want to do is just move the up down arrow keys, which cancels that automatic six second boot. Um, so as you can see here, you've got two options here, boot from the local disk, which will just then continue to boot the hard disk, um, which we don't want, or we've got the ASX 6.7 standard installer. So we're going to go ahead and select that. As you can see here, it's going to start the SXI installer process. Okay. And as you can see, the uh, starting the process doesn't take long at all. And for this demo, uh, my machine literally has just got um, two two core CPUs, so I'm using four cores and 16 gig of RAM. Um, not the most powerful machine, but it'll do perfectly for the demonstration. I've also got uh, two network cards on this machine. Um, so uh, later in the video, once we get it set up, I can touch base on a few things around networking. So we're just going to let that finish up. Uh, shouldn't take too much longer. Uh, when you get to the screen saying welcome to installation, if you just hit enter. And F11 here just to say, okay, yeah, you acknowledge the terms and conditions. Uh, feel free to read them, but I think, to be honest, most people don't. Okay, so you can see here on my machine, I've got two disks. I've got a 40 gig uh, disk and a 250 gig disk. Now, VMware itself doesn't take much space. Um, to be honest, you can probably get away with 20 gigabytes um, and a lot of new generation servers you actually do the installation on to an SD card so the actual install of the hypervisor itself doesn't need much space at all and, and it doesn't need to be super fast either so again if you do have an SD card reader uh, on most common kind of new HP servers there's a dedicated SD card inside the server for booting VMware. So if you've just got a standard PC and you want to boot off an SD card, feel free to do so. Um, so what we're going to do here is just select the 40 gig drive. I'm just going to check uh, in my case. Oh, and there's, you should be UK here somewhere. And there we go, United Kingdom. Um, now we're going to set a root password. Um, I recommend making this fairly strong. If you're going to use this in a production environment, if it's just for a test, set it to whatever you like. Okay. Uh, and if obviously you type the password in twice uh, correctly, it'll tell you it matches. Then just press enter to continue. And as you can see, I don't have enough characters. So I'm just going to go back and add a few more. Um, I think it has to be a minimum of eight or nine with at least one uppercase um, and one special character. So Kate's asking me here, do I want to go ahead? Yeah. Are you sure you want to install on the C drive or your first disk that you selected? Because everything on it will be wiped. And in this case, we just say, yep. Yeah. And as you can see, it's uh, even on my fairly slow machine. It's rattling through uh, pretty darn quick. 
I mean, the whole process from start to finish shouldn't really take more than about 20 minutes. Okay, so at this point you want to remove your uh, memory stick and basically um, just press enter to start the reboot process. Okay, as you can see she's uh, rebooted and uh, now is now restarting. Again, the VMware hypervisor is very quick. With it being Linux-based, it doesn't take long to boot uh, and to finish installing. Okay, we're nearly at the end of the process. Server's just about booted up. Okay, so this screen here, uh, this is pretty much your finished the, the base initial install. Um, and the first thing to note over here is the web address. Okay, so what you need to do in this case usually is to go into that and change that. Um, so what I normally recommend doing is that you uh, press F2 to customize. Okay, and when you hit F2, it's going to ask you for the root password, and that's the password you set during the startup. And once we type that in, that'll then take us into the Mandarin screen. Okay, there's a lot of different options in here where you can change the password, uh, restart Mandarin services, test networks, and lots of other bits and pieces. Uh, the main one we're interested in here is the option here to configure the Mandarin network. So, obviously, what we need to do here is obviously we've got a number of different network adapters you can look at. Um, but the main thing we're looking at here is the IPv4 or IPv6 configuration. I think most people uh, will always generally tend to use IPv4. Uh, so if you select that and press enter, obviously if you want to select optional VLANs, you can. Uh, so we select enter on IPv4 and then select this option here um, to do a static IP address. And then you can pretty much set that to whatever you want. So let's say, for example, I'll just change that to uh, .50 uh, or .150. Um, so I'm going to change that to 150 and give it a static address. Press Enter to OK that. Um, at this point, I would recommend you press Escape to come out of the menu. Apply changes, hit wide for yes. Then you're back to the uh, to the main system. Um, press Escape again, and that's going to take you back to the machine, uh, back to the main screen. And as you can see, or you should be able to see here, your IP address has updated. 
the one thing I do recommend that you do before you do anything else is take the option to do an F12 and actually just restart the VMware host because I have seen instances where even though you set the new IP it doesn't actually take hold until after a reboot okay it's going to ask you for so hit the F12 and it's going to ask you for your password Uh, if you had any VMWares, it's just saying it's going to forcefully shut them down. So you can just ignore that and hit uh, F2 to do the shutdown. So, okay, we're going to pause the video at this point. Um, we're going to come back in just a moment. Um, we'll look at how we actually connect to this uh, machine, the new VMware box. Back now, and we're ready to uh, connect to our VMware server. Uh, but before we do that, uh, I would just like to kind of recommend uh, you might want to check out my blog site, uh, wafflefree.com. Some pretty good, interesting articles in there, and that's where you'll find this article uh, going forward uh, or on YouTube. So, connecting to our VMware host is pretty simple. You just open up one of your uh, favorite browsers. Uh, I would recommend. Firefox because it seems to work a little bit better with uh, VMware for some reason um, so the first thing we need to do is browse if we have a look at the top um, to the web address we set for the server so I've gone ahead and done that and uh, the first thing we get here is this warning or potentially might have this warning uh, that's because we're not using SSL certificates um, so what you can do is here is click on advanced and then basically in the option there accept the risk and continue and that will take you to your login page for your VMware server so you should now have kind of a login page that looks like this so the standard login here you want is going to be root and the password is going to be whatever you created I'll just type that in. You can choose to save or not. Uh, I'll just save it. See me retyping in. Um, you then get this little thing saying join the VMware customer experience program. Um, Thomas, I never trust these things. So I'm just going to untick that and click OK. So here we have it. You're actually connected to your VMware hypervisor host. Um, and as you can see at the top, okay, we're using very little CPU. Um, we're using 8% of our uh, 16 gig, so we're using less than 2 gig for the hypervisor, so that's good. And the, um, the storage here, you can see that it's showing the capacity of 31 gigabytes. Um, the reason for that is because obviously that's looking at the original boot drive and we haven't got round to actually adding in the extra storage yet. So the first thing you're going to want to do is, uh, depending on if you're using local disk or if you're using network disk, um, you can see that we've got only one data store at the moment. And this is the original 40 gig disk that we installed the uh, VMware hypervisor on. Now, obviously, we don't want to use that um, to install VMware's. One, because it's not very much space. And two, it's never ever recommended to install any VM on the Hypervisor boot drive. So to add in any additional data stores or disks, um, you literally select this option called New Data Store. And then what you want to do here is you want to add a new VMS data store. Okay, so let's click next. And if we can see here, it's found the 250 gig disk that you had. Um, and we'll just call this uh, data, data store 2. Very original. Click next. And then it's just telling us how much you're going to have free. Uh, and what we're doing here is just use the full disk. You can select to use different 
custom amount of the disk, but we're going to just use it all. Okay, and finish. Just hit yes to that. That's just warning us that anything on that disk is going to be wiped. We're quite happy with that. And as you can see in the bottom, the, the progress is shown here. And it's near instantaneous. So our data store 2, where we want to store the VMWares, it's been created. Okay. Um, so what next? Well, I think now we'll take a look at um, creating your first VMware. Just to point out at the top here, um, any particular adapters that you've got in your card, like um, host bus adapters for uh, SAS storage, or if you're using iSCSI storage and you're using a particular network card, um, what you can do here is, if your adapter isn't being shown up here, you can basically hit the option to rescan, and that'll find any uh, storage adapters for you. The other good thing about that is that's how you kind of scan um, for your storage if it doesn't show up. Uh, the other thing here just tells you a little bit more about other devices in your machine. Um, and then from the way you've got persistent memory. But we're not interested in any of that at the moment. Um, here you can see obviously the, uh, an overview. Click on host. Um, this tells you a little bit more about your machine. If you scroll down, you can see obviously performance metrics. Uh, what you've got set up here. So, as you can see, we've got no virtual machines. Um, so, the first thing we want to do is let's right click on the host and then select this option to create or register a new VM. Okay, and from here you just select the top option to create a new virtual machine. Um, if you have a pre-built um, virtual machine from a third party for a specific tool or purpose, you can import the OVF or OVA file, or if you have an existing machine, you can also register that and just point at it. But in this case, we want to take a look at creating a whole new machine. So it's very simply click Next. Uh, what do we want to call this? Um, let's call this PC1, for example. Um, it's going to, down here, it's going to ask us, okay, what operating system are we going to do? So we'll just say, okay, we're going to go with Windows, and we're going to go with Windows 10. Uh, this should be a Windows 10 there somewhere. Yep, Windows 10 64-bit, okay. Uh, click next. So this bit here, which data store do you want to stick it on? And it's automatically defaulted to the second data store. So we just want to leave it on that. And this is where we decide, okay, how much space do we want to give it? How much RAM? How many CPUs? So for the sake of this, we'll say, yeah, four gig of RAM, two CPUs. And let's just give it 40 gig just be a little bit more generous um, it's also good to install USB controller if you want to a network adapter uh, which is the VM default VMware um, a CD-ROM drive or video card now these days most people don't really use CDs very often it's normally ISO is downloaded off the internet uh, so if we expand the CD drive, what we can actually do is change this. So instead of being the local CD drive, um, you can actually change that to boot off an ISO disk. Um, but we'll leave that like that for now. And when you're finished, when you're happy with all those, just hit finish. And what that's going to do is that's going to go away and create you a blank virtual machine. Uh, 
and as you can see here we have uh, one virtual machine if we if we click on it uh, it is PC1 um, so that's that's essentially the blank shell that you need to create a virtual machine oh, obviously we're not going to do that in this session because this session is just about getting your hypervisor up and running and how to create your first virtual machine um, obviously if we were to power that up this would start the uh, the Windows 10 setup process assuming that we had a CD in the drive and away you would go and you just set your Windows 10 machine up as normal about wraps it up for this video um, check the links in the comments below uh, we'll be posting a, a link to another YouTube video where I'll actually be building the uh, virtual machine from scratch so we'll start this kind of PC1 um, build from the beginning again and we'll actually go through the whole process of actually installing Windows 10 uh, and experimenting with that uh, virtual machine. Um, I'll also touch base on the next episode uh, about playing around with the networking settings or maybe do a separate video. So keep an eye out for that. Um, so please subscribe, um, like the channel, and uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully it's been useful. So hopefully see you again soon. Bye now.